Hey everybody, it's Jules here with Beanie. Hello. And today we are back with another episode of the Monday Night War. But we're not actually set on Brobnar today. What are shock, you talking about? Shock horror, I know it's mad. Today we're actually playing in Octarius because we are playing a brand new version of Kill Team for you lovely people today. It is Commando Orcs versus the one and only Krieg Guardsman. I'm Krieg. Let's see how we get on. So today for you, we are playing an open War of the New Kill Team box set. Thank you very much, GW, for sending through an advanced copy for us to review. We managed to just about get all of the models painted up in time. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do all of the scenery, so instead we have made our own battlefield today and we are playing using the open war rules. That means that there are no tack op stuff except for one that our leader is going to try and uh, get. And the only objective here is to hold and secure these objectives for four turns turns or four turning points as the game calls them you score one victory point for each one that you hold the winner is the person with the most points at the end of those four turns so that is very simple because we just kind of need to get used to the rules because a lot has changed so let's go and meet the kill teams Okay, so we're going to kick things off with the Orcs. And as you can see here, I am bringing a full squad of commandos. Now, to lead things up, I have got a boss knob here with a power claw who is hopefully going to crush some Humi guardsmen. Hopefully he'll get to use that in combat. He's supported by an orc sniper over here. Yes, that's right. You heard me, an orc that hits on threes and I'm as gobsmacked as the rest of you are out there. I've got a chopper boy over here who is exceptional in combat, but is not that great in uh, ranged attacks. He throws his knives. He, he throws his knives and he gets to reroll all hits when he's in combat, so I'm pretty happy with him. Then we've got a Dacker boy who is basically the exact opposite. He gets to reroll all of his shots with, if he's within range, but is not that useful in combat. They are supported by four regular commandos with sluggers and choppers over here. And then we have these the absolute stars of the show here. We've got Wayne Grotsky over here, my uh, Grot Commando, who is going to be using his skills of... Yeah, uh, his, his skills of... Uh, he can hide very well. He is constantly in conceal mode, which means that he basically is very hard to target, which is great. But uh, his Grot Chopper does one damage, and that's all he's got. No ranged weapons whatsoever. He's got a grappling claw, which helps him traverse stuff, but that's it. But then, next to him, we've got Chomsky, who is my bomb squig, who definitely brings the bang, but will he explode within my own ranks and take out all of the rest of my yes, troops? Please. Yeah, that is my kill team for Orc Commandos right there. Let's hope that I have better roles than I did last week, eh? Now, Beanie's kill team is very diverse indeed. Tell us what you have got, my friend. Okay, so on the uh, on the end here, we have a normal veteran guardsman. Mm -hmm. And next to him is a hardened guardsman Ooh. who has a bionic hand for crushing people with. Ooh, uh, nice. Next to that is the medic who looks like he's late for his first day of a job. I like that he's got his spade there as well. Like yeah, he's, he's been planting some flowers before he goes out to war. He's, Love he, this. He's what he's all about. Yep. Um, uh, next to him is the spotter who uh, has some special ability he's involving binoculars I, I I believe he has some uh, things that he can help other people shoot other people who they can't see or something like that where he helps the sniper it's something That's to do with really like cool. it's, yeah it helps it in like tandem with other uh, units there next to him uh, we have a grenade launcher oh, veteran oh, oh. so he's just gonna be popping face yep uh, next to him is uh, well it's clubber lang obviously classic. what else would you call him classic <laughs> and he's gonna smash people with that and it's an amazing looking weapon yes sir uh, and here is my sniper with a long las who's gonna cap your sniper in the chops yeah he hits on twos and can fire when he's within uh when he's concealed which is a bit of a problem for my guys here yeah. really yeah uh, next to that got a good old trusty melter because nice. melters a class yep um and i've got a flamer so i'm gonna melt your face oh god and then finally leading the charge is your krieg sergeant veteran yes. is that what no, he is yeah he's a uh, set yeah, veteran sergeant, veteran and sergeant. he has a power sword and a bolter. Class, a bolt classic. That is a lovely Ooh. looking Cree kill team that you've got there. But how will they do? Well, let's find out as we go into turning point number one. 
So deployment is done. The uh, Kree guardsmen over here are facing a horde of orcs that have arrived near their encampment and are spreading with fierce ferocity. We've got the uh, captain alongside uh, the regular guardsmen, Clubber Lang's over there, the medic's over in there. We have the sniper up top with another regular guardsman, allowing them a vantage point to shoot down at anyone who enters the center of the battlefield. And then we've got a few other sneaky guardsmen over here, such as the comms guy who's going to be supporting support and uh, uh, the supporting other people from there. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty nice uh, layout that you've got there. I've gone for um, the Dacker boy behind cover over here to hopefully unleash hell if anyone gets too close to objective number three. But Wayne Grotsky and my sniper over there ready to again offer fire support on objective three and four. I've then got all of my commandos and the chopper boy and the boss knob all on this side of the board, hopefully ready to, sm to swarm forward and capture objectives and kill anyone who gets in our way. That's the plan. But as most of the times, my plans usually uh, suck and die. So uh, yeah, there's only one more rule that we need to say before the match starts. And that is the fact that because uh, Beanie is playing the Krieg guards, he gets an ancillary support option, which is basically um, a sort of extra add-ons that he can give the small buffs, their one-time use uh, that can be used once per turn. And they are incredible. He's chosen the artillery barrage and the guided missile, which both sound absolutely horrendous. And as they come up in battle, we'll be sure to let you know how devastating they are. The only other rule that I've got are the fact that these commandos here are throat slitters, which means that they can make a charge move even when they are concealed. Are you confused about conceal and engagement? Ah, well, trust me, me so will we, but we will explain as we move and select our tactical op for our lead to complete which is basically one secondary objective for this battle and uh yeah let's go and draw them so for this mission we've chosen one tack up a secondary objective for each of our teams to try and complete and i've gone for blow it up now beanie has selected the ore refinery that you can see over there in the corner and what i've got to do is get one of my guys next to it and use the blow it up action to try and destroy it if i do that i get two victory points for doing it now beanie has chosen glory in death yeah. if more friendly operatives were incapacitated than enemy operatives but you scored more victory points from the mission objective you scored two victory points at the end of the game so it's very thematic across the board i want to destroy stuff and beanie well he's accepting losses in the most krieg way possible victory in death so we have decided whether or not our operatives are engaged or concealed now just a quick terminology check on this if you are concealed it means that you can be behind cover and an enemy can't shoot at you if you are within cover because you are concealed yay just makes it harder for people to hit you if you're concealed but you can't shoot unless you have special actions that say otherwise if you have this icon it means you are engaged it means you can move it means you can shoot it means you can do tons of different actions but because you are running recklessly into the battlefield you're more likely to be shot so that's a basic sort of rule on that as and when it comes up, we'll explain more and check the rule book and then check it again. Just to make sure that we actually understand it. So Beanie's going to activate one of his operatives first. So let's move into the turning point numero uno. So to kick things off, Beanie has moved his first operative, the Melted Gun Kriegsman, up and over the barricade here past his comms friend and has dropped down here. Now, he is in the open. But the problem is, is that I haven't got anyone to shoot at him with because I put everyone in conceal over here. So we will see as I go into my first activation. My commando jumped forward using his move action to get to here. He's still within range of this objective marker, so he used the mission-specific action called Secure. So I flipped it to notify that, which means that I score one victory point. Back to Bean. Beanie responded in kind, Clubber Lang securing him objective number four, but he's out in the open. And I think I'm gonna do the first shooting attack of this game and activate my Orc Sniper, who's gonna fire down into him. In fact, the sniper's changed his mind. It's too easy. So instead, he's going to use his special ability, Avid, which means he can make a free shooting attack action at the cost of two AP and shoot down into this guy here, into the sergeant with six attacks on his scoped big shooter and then make four attacks on the guy next to him. Let's see how we do because this orc is hitting on threes, baby. Here we go, first roll of the game. No pressure, Bean, whatsoever, right? No pressure, eh? Lots of pressure. Okay, ooh, there is uh, quite a fair few hits there, my friend, and one critical hit as well. So now please roll your defense dice for your sergeant. That's five hits so far. So you've got a save of five. 
You get to retain one of them anyway as a uh, p an automatic success because you are in cover. Mm -hmm. so, so you have three, three defense. Put them into the pool and let's resolve them. So I'm assuming you'll want to resolve the critical hit with my critical hit there. Yes. So we remove them from the dice pool. And then you've two other saves, which you can just choose to get rid of another two. So two wounds go through, so you take four damage. Oh, not, he's on four. Not bad at all. Oh. And then I get to make another four attacks against the guy who is next to him. Oh. Oh, actually, I've just realised that because he's got a vantage point, you don't get the benefits of cover. So we, it, we'll have to, yes, yeah, so we'll just have to remember that uh, for next time. Um, so this guy here will be shooting four times. Ooh, there is three big hits and one critical hit. So you don't get to retain one of your save, your cover saves because he has a vantage point. Ooh, okay. So you make one save and you take. Uh, Four damage from that one because it's two mortal wounds on top of its regular two, and then two damage from the other one. Okay, so he is down to two and he is down to one. Oh, not bad shooting, mate. Good job. And that is the end of his activation. Beanie Sniper is firing back, but before he makes this attack, the uh, sergeant is issuing a guardsman order called Take Aim, which means that every single uh, operative that's within a little bubble there that he is just within gets to re-roll all shooting hits of one. And because this sniper is hitting on twos, this is going to be pretty brutal indeed. Now, the sniper can shoot while he is concealed because he is that bloody stealthy. So, He's so sneaky. So let's see how Beanie does... Oh no, okay, and uh, this is That's an interesting six. one. So what this does here, uh, it does three mortal wounds on top of the three damage it does normally, so that is six mortal wounds that I'm going to have to really figure out a way of trying to save, but that is all hit so far. Let's see how I do with the defense. Okay, so I get to retain one of my dices automatically because he's behind cover, and then three saves, a five up. Come on, dude. Oh, okay, so he saved one of them, but he has failed two. Now, I'm just going to check to see if there's any strats that I can play in an emergency to keep this boy alive. Yes, luckily there is one strat that can be used, so I'm going down to one CP to use. Tis but a scratch. Use the tactical ploy in the resolve successful hit step of a shooting attack when the damage would be inflicted on a friendly commando. Aside from the commando grot, uh, ignore the damage inflicted from that attack dice. And unsurprisingly, I'm getting rid of the six mortal wounds one, which means I take a whopping three damage overall. So my sniper did three, <laughs> mortal, uh, did three wounds and yours, an orc, did like yeah. 15. Welcome to Kill Town, baby. Yeah. <laughs> My commando jumped up here, he is concealed, and he is behind cover. The comms guy moved from there, dashed over there. Okay, so we have skipped forward a little bit in time. I moved my boss knob up here with a dash. I moved another commando boy up here, and Beanie responded in kind by moving his forces forward. We've got the spotter, and we've got this guy over here, who is about to take a shot at my lovely, exposed commando boy over here. He has four shots with his las gun. Let's see if they hit on fours. Ooh, three, hit. three hits, not bad. And I get three defense dice. I get no cover bonus whatsoever. I make one, so I fail two, so that is four damage, isn't it? Ooh, mm -hmm. that puts him down to a six. six wounds remaining. Nice shot there, Bean. Thanks. Time skip the second. I've moved another commando up over here, and Beanie has now decided to unleash his guided missile Miss down from the heavens. Now, what we do here is, for the purposes of who can be seen by what for the guided missile, we're choosing this uh, operative over here, who has advantage points over the entirety of the battlefield, pretty much, and he is going to be targeting... This guy! The commander, who is on six wounds over here. Oh, dear me, he's going to get exploded real good. Hopefully. So, this hits on how, on how many on dice is it? Three. Oh, hits on threes, and he's got four dice. And there's one critical hit already. Three hits. Let's see if he makes any saves here, because Minus these... Yes, yeah, so this is on a six-up rather than a regular one. So he Ooh, makes one. ones. Oh, so a critical success there. I'm going to use that to get rid of... Yeah. doesn't really matter with this one. So he takes... How many wounds is it for the guy? It's four damage apiece. That's eight wounds that go through. He so he has been obliterated. <laughs> oh, no, my poor commando boy. But oh. that's um, that's the only tactical asset that Beanie can use this turning point. He's only okay. got one left. So does this guy still have an action? 
No, it goes back to my turn now uh, because that counts as you using it, but you don't uh, flip his token over. It doesn't count as him being activated, do it? So, you know in uh, Streets of Rage where the uh, you'd summon the police car and it would fire up a missile? Yeah. That's just what's happened, effectively. Okay, cool. okay, so I have moved my choppy boy up over here and now Beanie is activating his medic who's going to have to move closer to the sergeant in order to heal him, but he's spending his other activation point to heal him 2d3 wounds, so he could get back up to full. He is three, four. four, so four wounds. He's up to six, so only one point away from being at full health. Not he a bad move. Oh, it's eight. Oh, he's extra tough, is he? he is. Nice job. So my Dacker boy has moved up with his first activation to objective marker three. Now, normally I would choose to flip that and do the secure action on that, but instead I'm going to try and unload as many slugs as I can into Beanie's captain or sergeant over here. So what I'm going to do is uh, use Dacker Dash, which allows him to fire and then shoot afterwards. He shoots five times, but because Beanie is behind cover, it does mean that he will be able to get one of these saves uh, retained as an automatic success. And Beanie, I think, is checking some tactical stuff now to see if there's anything to allow him to survive against my onslaught. So Beanie is using Take Cover, which allows him to improve his save characteristic by one. So he'd be saving on a four up instead of a five up. Will my Dacker boy get any big hits? Ooh, not like that, mate. That is, that is all misses. He has done absolutely nothing. So I think he's going to... Uh, Valor is the better part of grace. Is that what they call it? They, they're saying where... Discretion is the greatest part of Valor. That's the one, yeah. So he's basically just going to uh, get out of town and move up there with his dash. He's behind cover now and he is activated. Oh dear, that was a bit stinky, mate. Where's the sergeant gone? Oh, he's only made a charge in against the Dacker boy who was totally not expecting that. And now we get to experience our first fight phase in this brand new version of Kill Team. It's slightly different to Warmer 40k because what you do is you roll your dice simultaneously and then we'll take it from there. There. So I hit on threes. I've got three successful uh, dice rolls. What have you got? Three and a crit. Okay, so now we go through alternating with the attacker going first, saying whether or not they're going to strike or parry. Now, if Beanie says strike, it means he's going to try and inflict damage, and I have to try and get around that. So what I'm going to do is, unfortunately, I think I'm two, I think I'm dead no matter what because you're on a lethal with uh, fives, so which means all... how much damage are they? Six that, damage that, a piece. That would be Twelve. Beanie attacked with his critical hit. I have to take that no matter what. Then I'm going to punch back for three damage, which he can choose to block. Is he going to block? No. Okay, so he takes three damage, then he'll be attacking back with one of his Six. critical attacks. I'll spend my other two defense dice that I made to cancel out that, and then I take that so I die. That is the only way that I could have done any damage back to him, yes, but unfortunately, did. Did my Dacker boy is Dacker dead. Okay, so Beanie's grenade launcher guy has moved forward. He's still within range of the sergeant, so he's going to be firing bang straight up into the sniper boy, hitting with four shots, hitting on fours. We're rolling one. That is two, two critical hits, though, um, and I get to retain one automatic as a save for my guy there, and so it's just two saves against this. Ooh, uh, so I take two full pelted things, which is five damage apiece, which unfortunately means that he yes. is dead. Yes. Uh, Right, so this guy is very much dead unless I can do a command point reroll, spending my last CP point to see if I can get a six. It is a, oh, a bit of a risky maneuver. But he got it! Yes! There we go. So he only takes uh, five damage, wasn't it, from the thing there. So that puts him down to four. He is still alive! Nice. So after a last bit of movement from the Flamer who moved into cover over here and the other guardsmen just waiting out the round, that is the end of turning point one. Now, I have not scored my attack up, which is to destroy this beautiful bastard, and Beanie only counts at the end of the game, doesn't mm -hmm. it? So he's got a fair go way to go, but he has killed two of my commandos Should at them. Have the <laughs> Should have one. killed this guy as well, but he's still alive <laughs> as we move into the turning point number two. Take some of this and some of that. Oh, we want to lose. So at the beginning of turning point, turn two, Beanie has activated this lone gunner right here. Yes. And he has set the order, the guardsman order, to take aim again, meaning that uh, when they're within a certain range of this guy, they can re-roll ones to their shooting. And he is going to shoot at this commando over here, this poor old commander with his last yes. gun. So he's hitting on... No, with his last gun, with his grenade launcher. Oh, with his grenade launcher. He's just going for it, so is he? So fours, re-rolling ones. Fours, re-rolling ones. Okay, so there's two, two re-rolls there. Okay, so that is all hits. And only one crit. Only three defense dice in there. He has made 
zero of them because I believe he has a minus one AP, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This one here. So that is him gone, isn't it? Yep. Because it's him obliterated yeah, by the explosion. Then... Ooh, nasty, so, nasty, nasty. So, he have one wound, but he is killed... Well, yeah, he's done, a lot of damage. he's done very, very well. And you're about to claim another one of my operatives now because immediately I'm going to respond by activating the Bomb Squig, who is going to charge out and around into the middle there and then use his shoot action to explode, taking everyone around with him. So the Bomb Squig has advanced forward. He gets four attacks, hitting on three. These are AP minus one, and if they're sixes, they're AP minus two. Here we go. First up against the leader. Okay, so they all hit, but no crits right there. So that three defense dice looking for sixes. He dared, because they're five damage apiece that have gone through. And there's four that have already gone through. He's gone. Yes, he is. And then he will do the same attack against this guy, because he is within range of the explosion. And that is another four hits with AP minus two. So no save against this guy. So he is dead as well. And the bomb squig goes goodbye. That was a very... Explosive turn, wasn't it, Bean? Uh, <laughs> we, we cry inside. <laughs> but that lead us down, which means that Beanie will not be getting any command points going forward. So that was a very tactical move right there. Indeed. Okay, so the melter gun is moving up and shooting down at my boss knob, who is not cowering, just uh, tactically thinking about life inside this little terrain piece here. It's four attacks coming in. It is, oh my, the tension is killing me. So it is only one hit. And he's command outside. Points. You're going to command point, reroll one of them. Mm -hmm. For a, another one. Okay, so that is, only, that. <laughs> that is only one coming in. I get uh, three minus dice. Um, is it minus two? Mm -hmm. I thought that it was only, oh, it is AP2. Whoa, do I not get a save? Let's check. Let's come into the book with me, my friends. We get save of four. So it'll be a save of six then with three dice. Here we go. Six ups. Ugh. Oh, I saw it, but no, he takes how many damage Six from that? Damage. Six damage from that one there. So that puts him down to seven. Six, he's got 13 wounds. My commander gets eight, yours gets three. Because he's an orc, man. That's just how it works. Okay, <laughs> right. So that is him wounded, but not out of the fight yet. Okay, so I've activated this commando who has used his first turn to flip the objective marker. So I score one victory point for that. Then I've used a charge action to get him up against the spotter. And then I'm paying a CP to do crump him, which means I get to perform a free fight action against him. Four dice hitting on threes and beanies hitting on Four. fours. Oh, I get three successes. What do you get? One. Okay, so I will be, well, a first attack strike. Are you going to block? Doesn't matter, I think, because I'll do eight damage in total going through. Yeah, so I'd you can just attack. I'd rather hit you. Cool. Yeah. So you'll be. Damage. So I take two. You take uh, eight. So that uh, spotter is out of there. You didn't spot that. No, very funny. Okay, oh, so he's got eight, eight wounds remaining. Beanie's flamer boy jumped up and is now unleashing a torrent of napalm, liquid death, against my commando boy, hitting on twos. Twos. Okay, so there is two misses there, but there are three hits and it's two damage apiece, so I only get uh, three saves of five up against this. Ooh, I get one critical save, so I'll use that to block your critical one. Not that it makes any difference, so I take four, four damage. damage. So I'm down to four. Ouch. Good. Okay, the sniper boy is taking aim and firing down at Clubber Lang. Six shots, hitting on threes, six to do mortals. We've got, ooh, four mortal wounds right there and uh, three hits in total. So please roll your defense dice. Ooh, so you can cancel out one of my sixes there, but you take uh, four mortal wounds, five, six yep, so in total. Down to, one. down to one, not bad. Okay, so Clubber Lang is firing his LAS gun into the wounded commando over here, hitting on fours. Okay, so we've got two hits, uh, three defense dice, looking for fives. Uh, we get zero, so unfortunately he Five is dead. He is dead. Yes. very dead indeed. And I flipped the thing. Yes, and he spent his other activation to flip. Objective four, scoring Beanie a victory point. Whee. Nice. So my commando boy jumped over the barricades and charged in and is doing a fight action against him. Now I know what you're thinking, but he's got the conceal action, but that is what these guys can do. The commandos are able to perform charge actions even with the conceal order and everyone can fight no matter what order they have. So it is four attacks, hitting on threes. Ooh, I got two crits. 
I've so, got all hits as well. So, what that means is uh, you will be able to, to use two of your defense dice to block one of my hits, but I'm definitely going in with five damage. What do you answer with? Stop that one. Okay, so he's blocking that one. Then I'll be following with another butterscotch candy. <laughs> uh, no, I will just hit you in the face. Yeah, so that means that you will die before that comes... Uh, no, you won't die before it comes in, so I will take... Is it two damage or three two damage? damage? So two damage coming in, five, and then four from that one. So he has killed the melter gun. You have killed the melter. But he has taken uh, that, so he's two. down to eight wounds. Mm-hmm. So Tut Snapper's gonna fire down at this guy right here because he's very angry that he lost his mate. So it's how many attacks has it been? Four. Four attacks hitting on twos. Hitting on twos. Six is due to oh, bloody hell. Four. Okay, so that's six mortal wounds apiece so far. Three dice to save on five ups. This will be interesting. Yeah, he's very dead, mate, yeah. because even if I block one of them, yeah. he takes six wounds and then another one goes through. So that is another commando dead. Woo-hoo. Oh, joining the ranks of the fallen. Okay, so he's only activated for one there. Yep, so you can do movements. Oh, there's nothing else you can do with him. So he can't shoot twice. No, he can't he shoot twice. No, time. no, no, no. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, he's feeling pretty good. He's so just going to pass the turn then. Yeah, he's nice. Stay up there, do it. So my boss knob has fallen back, but before he did, he has given an order to this chopper boy over here saying, get it done, which means that when he activates next, he'll be getting three activation points, which might mean the difference between a cheeky charge and some throwing knives action as well. But he's fallen back and he has flipped that token for another victory point. The medic moved up and healed Clubber Lang for three wounds, so he's up to four. So my chopper boy has jumped forward and he's going to spend his second APL to throw his throwing knives, which he can do even though he's concealed because they are classed as silent and he is just in range of Clubber Lang. And then finally, he's going to do a dash away from the combat and hide inside this uh, little terrain piece there to hopefully survive another round. It's four attacks hitting on threes, twos and fives. Here we go. Ooh, that is all misses. Sweet home Alabama. So let's just pretend that didn't happen and use his final move to dash him inside there and cry silently at what was meant to be, because that was horrendous. Yeah, that was going to be real cool. Ooh, Bean, please uh, activate and move away from this absolute horror show. The regular guardsman has moved up here to shoot down at my uh, big knob over here, so he's hitting on fours with four dice. He's got two hits. I just need to, I can retain one because I'm technically in cover. So I've got one auto pass anyway. So he won't die from this attack. Uh, but he will take two damage. So take three. Six, uh, six. That six do not do anything. There is no special rules for this. Oh, yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, in that case, then I'm going to resolve my successful one against the critical hit and do. I thought that could only be again. Oh, if you put them to the two. Yeah, so uh, no, uh, no, 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 hold on. Uh, I can retain one successful hit. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to use that and the one that yeah, I made to get, to get rid of the six, so I take just two from there. So he's yeah. down to two. I'll do. Sorry about this, guys. We're trying our best. It's new rules and it's a bit different. <laughs> So here we are at the end of turn two. I did not move up Wayne Grotsky because he only has five wounds. He's a little boy in a field of men and he's probably going to get absolutely destroyed if he does anything. But the hardened veteran of Beanie's army moved forward here, jumped down from his uh, spot next to the sniper and has taken up refuge behind this trash pile here. So that's the end of turn two. Pretty spicy indeed as we move into the roll off for turn three or turning point three. (laughs) Ooh, I love how this one blows up! So at the beginning of the turning point, I won the roll-off and I moved my commando knob back here. He's still got conceal and I flipped the token on the way, but not before giving this guy an extra APL, which might become very useful going forward. Beanie moved up his medic who healed uh, Clubber Lang back up to full. And now we go into... Well, he didn't move. He flipped oh, he the thing and... Oh, sorry, yeah. He, so, he... Then healed him up. so he flipped the thing and healed him up back to full. Very mm-hmm. nice indeed. I'm going to have to get get chopping i think right now oh boy here we go so the commando sniper is eyeing up club lang once more six attacks hitting on threes sixes do four more wounds so we have oh all hits so that's going to be quite spicy two damage a pop for each one so you save of fives so club you lang. take six uh, so you take four times two so eight wounds that's him dead Ooh. Yeah, that is him gone. Oh, Clubber Lang, pied oh, off. Oh, you pity the fool. 
Well, that's the thing. You healed him up only to be shot to ribbons by this guy here under a hailstorm of shells. Right, so that's the end of that activation. Moving on to Beanie's turn. The Flamer has moved around the corner and is targeting my poor little chopper boy inside here because he wants that objective for himself. So we are looking at how many dice is it? Five. Ooh, five Hitting dice. on twos. Hitting on twos. Ooh, wow. If only they did actual like uh, yeah, critical things because that's all hits. I get to retain one because I'm concealed and within cover. So it's two saves, a five up. Made a I failed them both. So how many is that? It's two times. Eight. eight damage, so I'm down to two. Still kicking, but very much burned. Ouch, indeed. So that is bad times for the chopper boy over here, but it's good times for Wayne Grotsky, who leapt forward. Finally, it's his time to shine. And he's flipped that objective, scoring me a point, because at the end of the day, I think I'm going to lose on bodies right here, but he might have scored me the victory with that. Go on, Bean, give me your worst. Poor old Wayne's little head proved too much for the uh, sniper to resist, so he's going to try and shoot the ever-loving piss out of him right now. Hit on touch. Okay, so he's already taken a big mortal wound from that. That's six that's enough to kill him. I don't even know what uh, his uh, rolling thing is, yeah, and I'm please. sure I'm sure it's worse than a regular boy. So let's take, I'd love to think so. let's take a look, shall we? So going to the commando grot, who has uh, three defense dice, but it's on a five, so he's completely the same, actually. Ooh. Oh, poor old Wayne. He is so, so very dead. dead. Goodbye. Goodbye. He did well. He did well. He earned me a point, and that's probably that might be enough to tip it. You never know. So that's my final activation now. And I got two more. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand firm. Because going out into the open here is just gonna be an absolute nightmare and it doesn't actually net me anything. So I think I'm just gonna throw some knives into your face. That's what I'm gonna do. I like it. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can do anything else, so. Let's have a look, see what the uh, Chopper Boy, is, Slasher Boy has got. It's four attacks, hitting on threes, and these do twos and fives. Ooh, at the um, uh, the Flamer Boy right there, because I'm out of range of everyone else. So here we go. Okay, so they're all hits, no um, uh, super special damages there. So I'll have three, and I'm within one of that. Does that it give... won't count for that no. one there, because okay. I'm in this rain piece. So threes. Five, so he defends two, so he takes... Uh, no, I, I defended one. Defended one, so you take uh, six damage right there. Okay, so he's down to two. That's two, does he have eight, does he, this guy? Oh, sorry, seven. Down to, yeah, down yeah. to one. Okay, yeah. right, so, but that is not enough to kill him, unfortunately, as much as I tried. So that's the end of all of my guys who have activated. Now it's just Bean who is able to do his activations with mm -hmm. this hardened veteran and this guy over here. Okay, so Bean has moved up the hardened veteran here to ready to take on that objective as soon as we flip over for the fourth round. And the other guy has moved over here ready to shoot in against the slasher boy who does not get the benefit of cover now because he can be seen dead on. Bang to right, so here we go. So hit on fours. So there is only, only one, one hit. hit. Um, and so it's three defense dice looking for fives. I don't oh, make no, it out. So what? Dead. No, I'm going to spend a CP to ignore the damage dice of that, so he's still alive. All oh, right. Tis but a flesh wound, so I'm still going. Okay, that's it, isn't it, for that it turn? Is, yeah. Right. So we're moving into the fourth and final turn. Let's mess up there, pretty boss. Right. So I won the roll off, and I'm activating the slasher boy over here. Now the tactical brain would tell me that all I need to do to draw this game, because Beanie can only score a maximum of three victory points here, is to Move this guy up here and flip this token. But at the moment, how many operatives have you lost, Bean? You have lost five, five and I've one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, seven. So I've only got three guys left. So yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, you've absolutely butchered me here. So for the fight, for the fun of the fight, I'm going to do the slasher boy. He's going to throw his knives into that uh, guy there. He's then going to charge into this guy over here, and then I'm going to spend one CP to do a free fight action for the crumpin. Um, special ops tactical thing. So here we go. It's four attacks with the knives first, hitting on threes, babies. Oh, there's two crits in there. And that means they'll be doing five damage, a pop. Okay. <laughs> so saves. None. None. So that is 10 damage. That guy's had. He's, he's skewered. Then he will move over there with his free... Um, uh, so not his free charge, his charge move for the next one, and then he's going to uh, spend one CP to do a free fight attack with him. Four dice, hitting on threes and re-rolling everything for my I twin shoppers. Oh, so I'm going to re-roll. Did you make any? I got one through. Okay, so I get uh, three through here. 
Now you've got one through. I'm going to attack you with one successful one for four damage. I'll take it. Cool, then you want to apply I'm that? I'm going to kill you. I'm not. I'm going to block it with that then. Parry with that, and then I'll do another Damn. four damage to kill you. So I've killed another one. That's eight damage in total. Oh, and I think you might have accidentally... No, because we're drawing. Thing is now, I just don't have to kill any more of your guys, and you won't get your victory point because we have the exact amount of uh, operatives on the field. So basically, you don't want to kill me, and I don't want to kill you. It is just time to score some points. So Bean is going to go into his activation now. Uh, the hardened veteran flipped the token for one victory point and has moved up to take refuge in the barricades over there. My boss knob moved up from behind cover using his special ability to give any one of the commando boys an extra AP else. We had three to play with. He made a normal move. He made a dash and then he flipped the objective marker, scoring me a victory point. Nice one, mate. So there's been a bit of movement over here. Beanie has fallen the medic back over here, but managed to flip over that objective marker. And I have jumped the sniper boy down from his tower so that he can flip over that objective marker as well, scoring us both a victory point. And now, in Beanie's own words, there's some spiteful shooting to be done because the sniper is going to fire at my commando boss knob and this will probably end really really badly for him okay right hit on touch oh okay so no mortals so technically i could save these i'm gonna spend uh, oh you're gonna do some okay hey, into the one that's okay one. right so three dice on fives he didn't make it. He got one critical uh, save, but that does not do enough. He dies under a flurry of, well, a single well-placed, a single well-placed last fire. And that, I believe, is the end of the entire game because everyone's been activated, haven't they now? So the final score is Bean, drum rob. I got five. Five and versus seven. Versus seven. So it's a victory for the Orc Commandos. Hey. Hey. What a fun little game this has been. Uh, it's been a bit weird getting used to the rules transitioning from 40k to this, yeah, but there are some very fun mechanics at play here, and I think that we'll be seeing a lot more of Kill Team on this channel as we work our way through Crusades and even use this to flesh out some narrative play that we've got going. That has been our first playthrough of Kill Team. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments section below, and if you want to chat to us further, you can do so over on Twitter. For me, at RetroJ with a zero, and Beanie, you can find him on Instagram at... Beanie40k. Damn right you can. But remember, if you're going to have a battle report, I, I was going to say, say it. can't say do it on Brobnar. Don't do, say on Octarius. If you're going to have an adjacent battle report, do it on Octarius. Oh, wow. nah, nah, nah. If you want to have a good time, just play some Kill Team with a friend, because this uh, new revamped rules... Uh, they Way say, better. Oh, man, no flesh wounds. Oh, no God. like issues with that. So... There, there's a lot going on here, and apologies if we have made mistakes. I just want to make it clear, because I'm sure that there'll be some sort of like things here that we haven't completely figured out, but we tried our bloody best. So let us know what you thought down below. We'll see you soon. Catch you later.